Hi everybody, this is Karen. So I'm doing this video to show three different techniques for uh, some people who are asking for help. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the simplest of all is to center one shape inside another. Um, and then while I'm showing you the, all of these things, I'm going to show you some other basic stuff as well. For example, if you want to draw a perfect circle, circle, <laughs> not circle, um, what you would do first is you click on the ellipse tool, you hold down your shift button on your keyboard, and then you draw out the circle. And you notice that the dimensions are shown at the bottom and on the sides of your um, images so that you can see, for example, here that the uh, sizes are exactly the same on the side and on the bottom so that it is an, a perfect circle. You can do the same thing to make a perfect square. You click the rectangle tool, hold down the shift button and drag out your square. To stop designing, because when you have one of these tools selected, as long as you keep moving, you know, um, pulling out shapes, you will continue to draw that shape until you click the select tool. And the select tool changes shape to a hand, your, your cursor changes shape to a hand when you are moving over a red line. And a red line is a cut line. Okay, As you move inside or away from the cut lines, there's the shape of your cursor is an arrow. As it changes, it becomes a hand. That means that you can now click and select your shape. Once your shape is selected, you can use these handles to drag your image to make it smaller, or I should say narrower in this case. You can drag it diagonally. You can drag it up and down. Now notice that your perfect circle is no longer a circle at this point because you have dragged it in different ways. Now. I'm going to show you something different. If you again take a circle and you hold the shift key to make a perfect circle, if you then select it and drag it diagonally, it will maintain the perfect circle shape because you're dragging both sideways and lengthways. Okay, it's only if you drag just up and down or from side to side then you lose your perfect circle shape. And the same applies to a square. So I'm going to get rid of these for now. And we're going to go on with uh, centering your images. So I'm going to take an oval and I'm going to take a rectangle. I'm going to put the rectangle over here and I'm going to make it larger than the oval so that I'll be able to center the oval within the rectangle. So once I've done that, again, I click my select tool and I draw a box around both to select both of them. And now I go over to my align window, click the icon, and I can choose center over here or center to page. Now these are different. Center will simply center the two items. Center to page will center the two items to the center of the page. So I'll show you the difference. If I just choose center, this is what happens. Okay, I'm going to undo that. Remember the undo button up here, this is what you're going to use the most. It's what I use the most. If you make a mistake or you change your mind and you want to go back a few steps, or then you go back too many steps and you want to redo, then you click the redo button over here. Those are very important to remember. I mean, you can't cause a whole lot of damage. If you make mistakes, you just undo and you go back to where you were. And if you just want to start over, you can do that as well. Okay. So now I'm going to show you the difference. When you center to page, this is what happens. I wonder why it didn't center though. <laughs> Just a second. Undo. I'm going to make sure that both my shapes are selected and I'm going to center to the page. Well, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense at all. It's supposed to center the two of them to the page and it's not doing that. Why? They're not grouped. Let me try it this way. Okay, it's centering. I get it. I understand. Okay, it's centering the two page, the two images, 
to the center of the page. What I was expecting was going to happen was they would be centered to the page and centered within each other. But if you want that first, you have to center them. And then you choose those two centered items and you center that to the page. But it already is. I'm going to do it again so that it can you can see it happen the way that I would have expected it. So now I take this, I choose the two items, and I center them, the, the oval within the rectangle, and then I center that to the page. And that's all there is to it. And again, that was in your Align window over here. It's The icon is called Open the Align Window. And if you're not sure, if you don't remember what you were supposed to do, just move your mouse over each of the icons and it will tell you what that icon is. Okay. And I don't think that you can change how that is. You can't display text below the icon. That would be handy. Okay, so we're going to get rid of these because we don't need these anymore. And the next thing I'm going to do is create a simple oblong shape with a slit at one end and a tab at the other. So to create a simple oblong shape, I'm going to use the rounded rectangle. I'm going to drag it out over here. Now notice the two red dots at the top left of the shape. When I let go of the shape, they disappear. Now again, to stop drawing and select, I need to click the Select tool. And now that it is in the shape of a hand, I can select it. What these two dots do is you can select them and move them to change the shape of the rounding of your rectangle and to, you know to change the amount the, the amount of rounding. And notice that the four corners change, not only one, they all change. Okay? Now it's not going to change the size or the or shape of your shape. It's only changing the rounding of the corner. Okay, and now to select the rest of the shape, uh, something else that I want to show you, and that is to know what is going to cut. You can click this icon up here. It's called Open the Cut Style Window. And now you see a bright red line. And you see here that it says cut. That means that it is a cut line. If I wanted to prevent this from cutting, I just click no cut. And now it's very faint red line. You can also change it to perforate edge and you'll have a perforated edge. I'm going to put that back to cut edge and I'm going to close this window and we're going to continue on with this design. So to make a slit at one end, I'm just going to draw a straight line and I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to make this a little bit shorter so it doesn't go that far beyond the edge. But that is a cut line and it will create a slit for you. And if you want to double check the cut line, here we go. It's bright red if, and it says cut over here. Okay. Um, if you want to make sure that your entire image will cut, select everything and you'll see that they're all bright red lines. You can choose here you, and you can make each of your lines something else unless you weld them. So I can make this no cut and only this will cut. Okay, And I'll put this back to cut or cut edge. Okay, that's if you had other shapes within there. Okay, So now I'll change that back to cut and I'll close this window. And we're going to add a tab now. I'm going to zoom back out and I'm going to go into my library and find something that would work well as a tab. So I'm going to choose this. So now this is huge. I certainly don't need that. And I'm going to ungroup these shapes. And I'm going to get rid of the ones I don't want to use. Whoops, it deleted everything. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to zoom out even further so I can see all of these and release the compound path. Sometimes you need to do that to get rid of extra stuff. I'm just dragging 
a square around all of those so that I can get rid of all of those. Now, I don't want to get rid of my rectangle, right? So now this is a little bit too big for the tab that I want. So I'm going to make it smaller. And I'm going to zoom back in in a second so that you can see more of what I'm doing. And I'm going to bring this over to here. Sort of line it up in the center. And then what's going to happen is all of these outer edges, once I weld it, will be the cut lines. This in the middle is going to disappear. I can actually drag it out a little bit further than that, just so you can see it a little bit better. So now to weld those, I need to select the two pieces I want to weld, two or more. And this is the weld icon down here. And now that has welded together. And you see you have a tab over here. Now this can be any shape you want to make a tab. I'm going to undo that and get rid of this shape. And I'm just going to put in a rounded rectangle and make a tab that way. And I'll move it over to be here. And I actually want it a little bit taller. So I'm going to extend it here, here, and I want my edges to be a little bit rounder and then I'll select the two pieces I want to weld and weld them and that's another tab you could do you could use anything you could use a circle an oval shapes in your library whatever so now I'm just gonna select everything again and show you the cut lines again and you see everything is a cut line and I'll close that again and I'll delete this because now we're done with this. Now the last thing is to make a panel for the front of a card with words and images welded inside. And it's a circle panel that we want. So there's a very important step in doing this that I'm going to show you right away. You choose your ellipse tool, press down your shift button on your keyboard to draw out a perfect circle. So now this is the important part. You need to create an offset and to do that I'm going to first select, select my shape and then I'm going to click the offset window here. And I'm going to do an internal offset. When I click this you're going to see that there's a, another line on the inside that has been created but I want that to be a little bit wider, the uh, space between. I'm just going to increase that a bit to there. You can do that whatever percentage you like. I'm just doing that so it shows well here. And then I'll click apply and now it has created an offset. Now here's the important step you need to be able to weld letters and images within a circle. You need to select these two shapes now and create a compound path. Make a compound path. And now you'll be able to weld shapes and letters to your circle. So I'm going to add some text. And I'm just going to write the word newbie. I actually want it in a different font. I want something a little bit fatter. So I'm going to start that over. Just click away and then I'll choose it and delete it. Uh, let's see. Impact. Or actually, this is a very good font right here. This looks nice. It'll show well. And again, I'll write the word newbie. And I'm going to take this and drag it to my circle. And you see now it is attached to this path. It's by dragging this circle over here that that works. Okay. Now I want my letters spaced out a little bit more because look at how it's the W is encroaching on the B over here. So all I need to do is I need to increase my character spacing over here so that it looks a little bit better. That's better. And that's it. Now I'm also going to bring in a, um, a heart shape to weld that to my <clears throat> circle as well. So this can be whatever you like. I'm just using a heart because it'll turn out nice. I had seen one earlier that was nice.
Okay, there's a bunch of hearts here. I'm just going to use one of these. Now I'm going to drag it off to the side. I'm going to zoom out so that I can see everything. I'm going to ungroup this. And usually when you get um, shapes from the store that are multiple shapes, they'll be grouped. So to be able to do anything, you need to ungroup them first. So the heart that I want to use, I'm going to use this shape over here. And I'm going to drag it out so that it fits well within my circle. I'm just going to get rid of these. And note that if I were to cut this now, the only things that will cut is what is on my mat. Whatever is over here on the side will not cut. But I'm just going to delete them because I don't need them. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to zoom in a bit again so that you can see what you need to do is you need to make sure that the parts of the heart are overlapping these circle lines for them to weld. They won't weld if they're not overlapping. And I'm also going to overlap down to the W here. And actually I would like it to overlap onto the dot on the I, but then not necessarily this far down. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be able to do that. Uh, now this is going out too far. Yeah, maybe not. Let's see. Oh, of course, if I bring the heart over this way a bit, maybe, maybe that will do it. Okay, this isn't going to be perfect uh, as far as the lettering goes. I just want to show you what you can do, okay? Because that's going to sort of hide the W. It's going a little bit too far. If, if I chose another shape heart, it would work a little bit better. But I just want to show you that this dot of the eye can be welded so that you have everything cutting out all together and you won't need to have little pieces. And in fact, in this word, with this font, you will have little pieces. Like this part of the E is going to be separate, as will this. So it's not perfect, but it's going to give you an idea of what you can do. I'm just going to move this over a little bit more. And of course now it's not on the dot of the eye. And there. See, because it is overlapping just slightly over here. Zoom in a little bit more and you can see it's overlapping here. So now to be able to weld, I need to select everything and click the weld button. And now you see it has welded here. All the letters down here. It has welded the dot of the I. Now, as I said, this W is messed up. Um, but that's where you would need to play around with things a little bit to get them the way you want them. But the main trick here is these two circles. You need to create that compound path to be able to do this. I'm going to show you what happens if you don't do that. Okay, you create a circle. Oh, okay, so it's not a perfect circle, but it's just going to show you this, the, uh, the result anyway. And now I'll type in the word newbie. I'll drag it over to my circle. This part will be fine. And by the way, you can put it on the outside of your circle or on the inside. Okay. So I'll drag out my letters a bit again so that they're spaced better. And if I try to weld this, my word disappears. You need the two circles and you need to create the compound path. And last little tip while I'm here, if you would like to change the color of the frame of your program, just click this button down here and you'll see that you can choose whatever color you like for your program. So I hope that these tips have helped you out. And again, please remember to subscribe to my channel. There is a subscribe button right below the video, and that would really help me out. Thanks so much for watching.